So do you mind if we start with uh, kind of like your life story? Because you're not from America, you're from Lebanon, right? Correct. So I was born in Lebanon, mm -hmm. but I want to go back a little Even just so you, you get the full story. Okay. I was born in Lebanon. However, ethnically, I'm Armenian. Really? Yes. Okay. And the reason I was born in Lebanon or the reason my parents decided to have me in Lebanon is because my grandparents were survivors of the Armenian genocide. Oh, wow. Which was the first genocide in the 20th century. Really? Yes. This is pre-World War II, right? Like 1920? 1915. It is uh, during World War I. Ah, okay. Wow. Yes. So my great-grandparents survived the Armenian Genocide. And so my grandparents ended up in um, Beirut, Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And my parents were not well off to be able to go back to Armenia when there was a mass um, movement. Because, you know, after the genocide, a diaspora forms. Mm -hmm. And then there are usually movements to take people back into the homeland. So my um, parents were not rich enough to take part of that movement and go back and establish themselves in Armenia. So they had me in Beirut, Lebanon. Oh, wow. So I grew up in Beirut. And so Beirut itself a very, is a very metropolitan city. Yeah. And me already not being ethnically Lebanese also added to that. So for example, I speak four languages. Mm -hmm. And I've had friends from different ethnicity, ethnicities, different faiths, religions, etc. So I really had that um, metropolitan vibe while growing up. Mm -hmm. um, I was also very well versed in the arts and um, languages, the humanities. At one point, I wanted to put my language skills to use. I wanted to go into translation, but then... And I was thinking about this today, like what happened that I decided not to go into translation and I decided to go into business. It was like kind of a push from various sides, you know, situation, uh, financial, economic, also parents, etc. Anyway, I'm so grateful that I went into business because right now I love what I teach. Mm -hmm. I love marketing. What was the question? Sorry. Oh, it was just your life story. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we have all the time, as long as you need. Just, you know, go for it. Yeah, I, I just don't want to ramble if that's not the point, you know? So, yeah, this was basically it, me growing up and then going, in, going to get my undergrad at Haigazian University, which was the only um, Armenian higher ed institution in the world outside of Armenia at the time. Oh, wow. Now I know there's one in LA right now because there's a huge uh, Armenian population there, but at the time that was it. And so I got my bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And then again, because of family circumstances, I knew I had to get a job. I couldn't go into a grad degree. We couldn't, we couldn't afford that because my sister was the next in line to get her bachelor's. Mm -hmm. So I started working a corporate job, nine to five. Um, I didn't like it. So in order to compensate for the fact that I wasn't liking my job, I relied heavily on my extracurricular activities, the arts. And then I was fortunate enough to get into an MBA program on a scholarship. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was very clear for me that I couldn't afford it, so I had to find a different way. So I'm like, let me rely on my um, disciplined attitude. So I went and studied for like entrance exams, etc. And I already had good grades in undergrad. And I had some working experience because I was working at the time. So all of those contributed in me getting a scholarship to pursue my um, MBA at the Lebanese American University, mm -hmm. is which is a very prestigious institution. 
Do you have a question? That's that was uh like there was a four year gap. So how long were you in industry? Two years. Okay. Yeah. So two years in industry and then full time MBA for two years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So because I got the scholarship. So one of the requirements for the scholarship was to be a full time student and get the degree in two years as opposed to three or four years like some of my friends at the time who were with me. Oh, wow. You know, they were working on the side. So they took longer to um, graduate, you know, which is normal. You know, if you, yeah. if you have a job at the side, you can't be a full-time student. Yeah. So that's why there's that four year between getting my undergrad and my master's because for two years I was in industry. And then for two years, I was a full-time student. And you know what? I think it was a smart move of me to put money on the side while I was working for those two years, because for the coming two years, I really didn't, didn't have an income. So I <laughs> yeah. spent that amount that I had put on the side back then. So then how did you end up being a PhD candidate? Okay. So while I was doing my MBA, mm -hmm. because they knew, um, the professors knew that um, my passion was marketing. Mm -hmm. they informed me that that institution, the Lebanese American University, was giving scholarships for students who got accepted into a PhD program in the United States as long as they promise, well, of course, contractually promise that upon completion of their PhD degree in the United States after four or five years, they will go back and become professors at the Lebanese American University. Oh, wow. Yeah, and this is um, one of the ways that the Lebanese American University or LAU in short, um, keeps their high standard because they get um, professors who have PhD degrees from the United States, mm -hmm. which um, is no, no secret that the United States is among the world's yeah, yeah. leaders when it comes to higher education. So that is how I was made aware of that fact and also was encouraged to go and pursue my um, PhD. Uh, Rensselaer, am I saying that right? Rensselaer. Rensselaer Polytechnic what? Institute. That's in America? That's in New York. Oh, and then that's how you said you were in New York. Correct. So how did you end up in Chicago? Um, good question. So when I was nearing my completion in New York, I knew that I was going to graduate. I was on the job market and I started um, getting job offers from different institutions. And I had also applied to Northeastern. And when I came to interview at Northeastern, um, it was not only professional, my interest also became personal because I really felt like a very positive, very warm vibe from all of those who I interviewed with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, be it the other professors, be it Dean Bedell, et cetera, et cetera. And towards the end of the day, when my interviews were coming to an end, I, I told Dean Bedell, I was very frank. I said, Dean Bedell, I already have other job offers <laughs> but I really want this job. So if you can do anything, it'll be, it'll work out great. And then, and then I, at the end of the day, I told him, and if not, also please let me know so I can take one of the other job offers that I have. So he said that he will get back to me um, by the end of the week. Mm -hmm. And then lo and behold, it was Thursday evening. I get a call from Dean Bedell. He said, and I don't know if I can say this because I'm I want to try and quote him verbatim. He <laughs> said, they told me you're my guy. And also the interesting thing is that day was my it was November 29th. I still remember that because it was my sister's birthday. So I immediately texted my sister. I said, so I'm getting this on your birthday. So it means this is a very good sign. 
Oh my god. That's how it happened. 